All righty then. Well, welcome everyone and thanks for joining me today. Um, and I'd like to thank the Taffy Group for inviting me to be here. Um, I'm Nancy Bush, by the way. And to give you a little bit about my background, Look, I've already broken it. Unbelievable. I have a special gift with electronics. It's true. Oh, don't hit the down. Got it. All right. Again, I'm Nancy Bush. And my experience in this industry goes way back. And my love of color goes way back, as you can tell by this color book. On my off time, this is how you usually see me next to something furry painting something um, and I've been in the kitchen and bath industry for over 20 years and the last 16 years has been focused solely on the manufactured surfacing material segment. Why is there a color book there? I could talk about a lot of different training in color and things that I've had but for this exercise I want to I want to make the connection with you about the color book in that, first of all, I had a lot of energy and my parents would buy these and I would spend hours on them. And so my mom had stacks of them in hiding for whenever she needed a break. But beyond that, they really provide a very safe place. They're a template. It doesn't matter if you're an artist. It doesn't matter if you know anything about color. And so think of a child in that safe space, using their color book, coloring the owl's feathers, the owl's hat, whatever color they like. That's the key. They like that color and they are the artist and the master. And hey, let's face it, art is subjective just like color and highly personal. In 2006, I stepped into my first fabricator shop and I was hooked. Kind of like color books are to art, it's in reverse. So beautiful colors of slabs that were flat and sheets sprang to life. And fabricators are magicians that can make that happen. So again, I was hooked. Fast forward to today, I'm the executive director of ISFA, I-S-F-A, used to be known as I-S-S-F-A, Ooh, say that five times fast. ISFA is now focused on all decorative surfacing materials. So meaning besides solid surface, we also support the industry involved with porcelain centered, as we call mineral surfaces. Some of you might be familiar with those and also quartz. So where do we begin in designing the perfect showroom. Where do we go from here? The first place you need to start is with your sales process. And you got to have a plan. Unfortunately, that does not involve color just yet. Just like a color book, you're building the pages. First, take stock of your showroom, what it currently looks like and what sales process your staff is going through, right? Really take a look from stem to stern, walk in the door, walk through, check out the flow, look at what's going on currently. And then I want you to imagine where you want it to be. Do you want to be at 3 million? Do you want to be at 5 million? Maybe it's not a number. Maybe it's a certain customer that you're trying to attract. What are the things that you fabricate? So review and define the segments, the techniques that your business does, and the materials that align with your business. This is really important. So think about the vendors and the brands and the types of materials that really support that business plan outcome that you want. This is interesting. And unfortunately, I have to, I have to take a look at my notes because there's a lot of them here. So, 46% of all businesses know, according to the study, that customer experience is a priority. And yet, less than half of them implement it. So 
Globally, 73% of people point to customer experience as the most important factor in their purchasing decision. So unless you're in Japan, it's pretty important, that experience. So really creating those pages of that color book that they can color on is critical. U.S. customers, 65% say that experience is more important for their purchasing decision than advertising. And these details count. On average, the experience drives a 13% increase in price. It's a nice bump. So maybe there's not a need for a huge elaborate showroom to create that experience. Now we get to the fun stuff, color. Color is just a huge influencer, not just for me, but for everybody. In fact, 90% of decisions are made within 90 seconds. And of those decisions, 62 to 90% of them are based on color. Using color as a filter will help drive loyalty through the positive experience, right? You're not telling them what they want. Couple of showrooms here. So remember, a decision is made on a product in 90 seconds, 90 seconds. And over 62% and up to 90 is based on color. So when you think about it, and you're gonna go shop for a car and you decide, hey, I want an F-150 truck or whatever that is. And you're standing before a line of them. They're all the same except for one thing. It's color. You're not going to walk towards the one that has the heated leather seats, the Bose sound system. You don't care about that. You're going to walk straight to the one in iconic silver because that's the color you have to have. You'll worry about those other things later. So remember that because your customer is equally distracted like that. So when and where you place those samples is super important. And in looking at these two showrooms, as you walk through the door, which one conveys a sense of, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna work on a project, and I'm gonna collaborate to build something. I hear it all the time. I have to show everything in my showroom because I don't want to lose a sale. And I would really challenge that thinking on so many levels, but let's just start with sales staff. Why do you invest in sales staff if you're going to show everything and hope for the best? Clearly, that doesn't work. It doesn't create an experience. Now I want to take you over to the commercial side of the business. And this is an architectural firm. Completely different mood when you walk in the door. What you don't see here are a bunch of samples because those are in a place known as the library, which you may or may not ever see, likely not, right? And it looks like this. What you are presented with as a client in that commercial setting are the products, the brands that support that firm that they know will work for your application. They're taking control of that sale completely, and so should you. And if you're not doing that, think about this side. You're leaving yourself wide open for a completely price-driven conversation. Now, if a customer comes in and says, I have to have this brand and I have to have this color, sell it to them but that's certainly not the majority. So how do you separate colors to get the customer into a lane? How do you figure that out? One way would be by simple colors, all the whites together, all the greens together, all the blues together. But when you start introducing pattern and texture, it starts to get overwhelming once again. And I think I kind of have a reason why. Another way to filter and take it to the next level is color temperature. This is a great slide. 
because obviously warm, neutral, and cool. And in that neutral space, a lot of times you'll hear those bulbs are called daylight. We've all seen it. I've done it myself. Trying to decide which holiday lights I'm gonna break up with because as it turns out, the two white lights don't look good together. It's a fact, right? When you start mixing color temperature, it's all weird. So, the simple color wheel. Notice this is this color wheel and not this one. These are really cool. I have some extras. And they're handy too. But you can get by with this simple color wheel. And you can start off, and I want you to think about this. You are not the expert, nor do you need to be. The expert that you have is standing before you. And you'd start with a simple question. What's your favorite color? Blue, awesome. No right or wrong answer, right? Which blue is better to you? The bluish green. So you prefer a little bit more of the cool, right? That's a good start. That's a good cue, right? You're taking the cue from your customer. What color temperature mood they may fall into. Taking that to the next level, you use mood boards. And you'll notice these mood boards don't have any references, nor will the ones that follow of any specific material. Not yet. Critical timing is really critical in this process. So looking at these, your customer gets an idea quickly. And again, I would venture to guess most people when I show mood boards to, they pick a lane in 90 seconds, just like Wikipedia says. So now let's dive a little deeper in each one. This is my favorite part, by the way. Cool. Cool colors are typified by blue undertones. Just really think about that. Try not to get too hung up on any nuances at all. Stick with the primary colors and picture that mid-range blue. This will help you really differentiate, say, a cool white versus a warm white, a cool gray versus a warmer gray or grige. Good descriptive words for cool colors are calm, airy, and crisp. Neutral, my favorite, by the way. Not that it matters and not that it's right. Neutral colors are a little bit trickier, right? Because they're in between and they can lean towards warm or towards cool. Neutral colors have a slight yellow undertone. It's really important to remember that. And again, you'll kind of know a neutral color by thinking of these three words, dusky, earthy, smoky. So think of muted. I like these because to me, they're chameleons. You can find a neutral that will really truly go with anything. Warm colors. I find these are the easiest for people to understand and relate to, right? It's quick. They're super warm, rich, saturated. So again, just for a quick review, red, blue, and yellow primary colors, warm red, blue cool, yellow neutral. Visualizing these as you're looking at a sea of whites, you're gonna get really good really fast. It'll surprise you. You don't have to be a color expert. You know those white tones of Christmas lights and the, and the yellow tones and the blue ones and how bad they look together. It's the same for colors. All colors have warm, neutral, and cool versions of them. So when you think of a red, think of a really, really warm red versus a more of a brick red versus a really cool, solid red. Remember, to be truly effective, this step needs to happen 
before they've been introduced any color samples. Now let's get back into this showroom. And let's say that your customer has chosen the cool as their, as their preferred temperature. You would definitely need to have an area that is all the cool tone and undertone colors in it. So everything, there'll be reds there, there will be whites there. Every color has that blue undertone would be in that. And the key is, just like the color book has the pictures in it, you've set the framework for them to plug and play the color into what you've already pre-designed. You've painted, you've already drawn the picture, they're going to paint it. So in doing that, you can kind of allow them some free reign now, right? And the cool thing is, no pun intended, Dallas. <laughs> the cool thing is that truly anything they pick in those colors will amazingly go together. That's what's so fantastic. If you really relate to color in all three, they will all jive. So they, it's almost like they can't make a mistake. Think of the production builders and how they have their palette boards and their standards. You pick something outside that standard and it's now custom. And I would encourage you again, if a customer comes in and wants that certain thing, that's fine, but it's not part of your standard and you should charge for that too. If you are truly at this point believing that you cannot do this, it's worth your time and your investment and your customer's time and investment for you to find someone that can. And there's tons of people. There's plenty of artists out there that can collate these samples in New York second. But the biggest thing that you need to focus on is that you're only showing in these zones the brands and the products that make sense for that original business plan. So you're, again, you're creating that page in the color book for them to color it. And if you're digital and you have a digital showroom, like this one from Quote Countertops, you can easily collate these samples into the different temperatures. What's really cool is even though this is a digital base selling, your sales rep can quickly determine the color temperature preference of your customer and they could email them a link taking them to this preferred palette. So they don't even need to walk in your showroom. They could go right on and design their kitchen, but only, only the colors that will go together will be shown together. It's a little sneak peek. Not very many people know this yet, but Q3, ISFA is working with partnership in quote countertops to offer our members and their customers the ability to go on to surfacesmagazine.com and go through these pre-designed color palettes. Adding another layer and sealing the deal, styles. But again, really important here when you get to stylistic theme, couple of things. One, you'll see that none of these, none of these styles have any reference to surfacing materials again, right? They're just generic, just kind of getting a vibe of how the customer's mood or style mood is. And then you move from their color palette and just plug them in. But it's important to start with color. And the reason for that is because color is so highly personal and emotional. So you just don't want to lose that customer's emotional attention. I'd also like to point out that this is a great opportunity when you add the layer of style to introduce specific style trends, right? So whether it's a built up edge, a waterfall edge, an eased edge, all those different add-ons and accessories that you can now add as a part of that. But again, starting with color, and I could go a lot longer on style and color, but this is a good start. So, just like life, there is no perfect material. I said that, can you believe it? 
It's true. There's not a perfect material and there's not a perfect color for everybody. But there is, I am convinced, the perfect material and color for the individual and the application, 100%. And without a doubt, without a doubt, no one, no one's favorite color is white with gray veins. Not what you think, not what their realtor thinks, or not what their mother-in-law thinks. The customer is right. And I'll leave it open for questions. So, sure. So the, the first one didn't show a bunch of colors. They were on the shelves and they were tucked away. And you would go in and you would have a conversation before you ever get opened up to what our friend Eric Tryon, we have a little podcast called the Behind the Surface Podcast. And Eric Tryon, I'll go back to that. There we go. Eric Tryon talks about the towers of terror, right? And he's right. Uh, and when you, put in, when you put in the artistic side of it and the color side of it and the emotion side of it, he's a thousand percent right, right? So coming into a showroom like the one on the left and creating a space to work and develop on, you know, collaborate together to build the perfect thing for the customer is just a much better experience than the one on the right. In addition to that, if any of you would like, I'm here today with our member marketing manager, Stephanie Ensel Matsko. We just go by Steph Matsko Ensel or Stephanie. You cannot have all of that in one mouthful. Um, she has some nice little takeaways. You are 100% welcome to use these, right? And if you want to use them in your business and for yourself, 100%. So hit Stephanie up. She has them. Um, I think that the biggest takeaway is just it's not one size fits all, right? You really have to decide your theme, build your color book, and let the customer paint it in. And close the deal. Oh, that was the sales manager background coming out of me. Any other questions? All right. Well, thanks, everyone. I appreciate you having me here today.